Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. My fiancé, male 28, and I, female 28, are set to be married in December. We got engaged in June 2023 and decided on a wedding date a year and a half in advance for everyone's convenience. We have been dating since 10 years and have been saving up for the wedding since 5 years to be able to afford an extravagant wedding in a palace in India, and we finally made those arrangements. My husband's sister has always been a golden child. She always got what she asked for, as opposed to my husband, who they treat like a cash cow. Every time his mother needs anything expensive, he's the first call she makes. I try not getting between them, but she's never shown any interest in his life. Coming to the wedding, we sent out Save the Dates in December 2023 for people to plan their holidays, plans way in advance. My sister-in-law got married three years back. It was a nice wedding, but not as fancy as ours. When she knew about the plans, she started finding problems in everything to a point where my husband asked her to stop interfering. Last week, we got a call from her in an excitement to tell us that she was pregnant and is expecting a child in December. Both of us were shocked, but happy for her and congratulated her. She then proceeded saying, so you can just come to San Francisco to get married at the city hall. I would need help with the baby. I was baffled and told her the wedding is still on and her having a child does not change our wedding plans. She threw a fit when I said that and hung up. Later that day, his mom called and told us to postpone the wedding six months so his sister could attend it, and if we don't, then she wouldn't attend either, and that her daughter's pregnancy is a bigger event than our stupid marriage. My husband was upset and chose to not respond, but I lost my crap. I told her that if my sister-in-law prioritized her pregnancy over our marriage, which she knew about for a year and a half, we're not obligated to prioritize her pregnancy over our happiness. My husband is speechless, and we don't know what to do. Would I be the a-hole for not postponing the wedding? Well, OP's mother-in-law obviously made it clear who the favorite is, and it isn't OP's husband. I think OP's husband needs to stop letting them use him as an ATM, and no one can demand OP's help because they made the choice to have a child. OP needs to keep the date, and if his parents choose not to attend, then they miss out. Because if OP postpones six months, she will definitely have another reason to interfere. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Not the a-hole. The cynic in me thinks it's a ploy by your sister-in-law to see how far you'll jump if she says higher. I hope I'm wrong, but I wouldn't be surprised if something goes sideways with the pregnancy if you change your wedding date. Either way, you don't need to rearrange your wedding because your sister-in-law can't make it. And the drama won't stop there either. Your mother-in-law will need to go where she is so she can be there for your sister-in-law in her time of need. Carry on with your plans, and don't kowtow to their unreasonable requests and demands. She then proceeded saying, So you tell her you respect that she prioritizes her daughter like that. Family is important. So from now on, you and your fiancé will prioritize your new family as well. This will mean that he cannot financially contribute to her or her family anymore. Expect requests for financial support for the new baby. Congratulations on your wedding day. Make it your day, not the a-hole. Don't postpone. Six months later, it'll be kids only six months old and not had all their shots, so can't travel. Then it'll be another excuse. Have your drama-free wedding without Golden Child and her enabler. I don't know where to begin or where to end this story. I can't discuss this with anyone I know because I feel like an a-hole while also feeling justified at the same time. This story will also sound made up, but it's really not, and I'm just hurting and want some place to type it all out to. I, female 36, have been with my husband, male 39, for over a decade. Early on, I had to have a hysterectomy due to health complications and told him if he wanted kids, we should go our separate ways. He insisted he was strictly child-free and didn't want kids. In every other way, we were perfect for each other. A few years into our marriage, we even had the chance to adopt a little girl from a family member's unplanned pregnancy. I was thrilled, but he still didn't want kids, so she was adopted elsewhere. Not being a mom hurt, but I accepted it. Sometime back, my husband started acting weird. You know how you just know when someone you love changes? He came home late, avoided S, and was cold. He denied anything was wrong, but I could tell he was lying. Whenever I tried to talk to him about it, 
he'd tell me I'm being psycho and controlling. So I snooped through his phone and found evidence of a very long affair. I'm not proud of it, but I did it, and I needed that peace of mind. His mistress, female 26 or 27, whom he introduced to me as his cousin, was around less than two months pregnant. They were discussing marriage after he divorced me. He admitted he didn't want to divorce me yet because he would lose our house, which I funded entirely. He'd also been using our joint account, which I contribute significantly more to, I earned considerably more than him, to pay for her rent and hospital expenses. When I confronted him, he admitted to the affair and her pregnancy. She came over, and things got heated. I tried to blame him, not her, but after a lot of tears and fighting, I lost control and told them that I hope they lost the child. I'm not proud of it, but I said it. He moved out of my house the next day, not sure where they live now. A few weeks later, she had a miscarriage. They blame me and believe I caused it. She came to our house, slapped me. I was not significantly injured. He didn't hurt me physically, but he didn't stop her either. Yes, I was foolish to let them in, but I'm in a weird mental state too and didn't expect her to hit me. Maybe I deserved it. I may have felt the same if someone said something like that about my unborn child and lost it. I won't file charges because it's not an option in my country, and maybe I deserve it for what I said. I just want to know if I'm being the a-hole, and if yes, how big of an a-hole am I? Thanks. Edit. What I said was so unforgivable in my religion. Wishing something like that on an unborn baby is like unforgivable. It's not some small thing. That's why I feel like an a-hole. A child is considered God's blessing. I said all that and cursed them, and maybe my anger and envy created that. That's why I think I'm the a-hole. Logically, I know I didn't cause it to actually happen, but the bad thing happened because I thought bad and because I was hurt, and my thoughts had effect. I would never wish a miscarriage on my worst enemy, and I also believe that you create the energy that the universe gives back to you. I also think OP's husband and his mistress have amassed vile karma for themselves. Of course, mistress losing the baby is not OP's fault, but she should not have wished bad for them. It's always better to have more dignity and be higher than people who didn't treat you right and hurt you. As they say, the best revenge is living your best life. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Not the a-hole. You didn't cause the miscarriage. Definitely get a divorce and make sure you protect all your assets, locks, banks, etc. ASAP. You didn't cause anything. These people are just looking to blame you for their own moral failings. And they did so violently. Also, what the hell? You can't press charges against someone who came into your own home and hit you? I'm so sorry your country sucks. If you could cause something by wishing for it, I'd be a billionaire from all the lotteries I'd win, and be 20 pounds thinner and live in a house with a pool, not the a-hole. I have three daughters, 17, 16, and 13. My middle daughter is very smart and has what I call a business mind. When she was 11, she started babysitting our neighbor's grandkids for free just because she liked watching them. Then she realized she could make money off of it. When she was 13, she made a next door account and posted an ad for babysitting. She posts ads frequently and responds to every post she sees about someone needing a babysitter in our town. Then when she was 14, she started expanding to neighboring towns. Her business exploded during the pandemic. She was in such high demand that she was able to charge $25 an hour at 15. She eventually had too many clients and hired her older sister and her friends to babysit for some of these people. She even had someone she hired sign a contract saying she gets 20% of the money from jobs she gets them, except for tips, which they get to keep. I also had a problem with her responding to every post and not leaving jobs for other people, but stayed quiet because it was the parent's choice to hire her. I never supported her taking part in her sister's and friend's wages though, but my husband fully supports it. My oldest daughter is saving to buy a car, and my middle daughter went to get her share of her wages. I didn't let my middle daughter take my oldest's money, and she's threatening to fire my oldest. My husband says our oldest knew what she was getting into when she signed the contract, but that still doesn't make it right in my opinion. Am I the a-hole for not letting my middle daughter take my oldest's wages? Edit. I saw some comments regarding this, but her babysitting business is a real company. She pays taxes and has liability insurance, just in case anything happens. My husband is a CPA and helps her with that side of the business. I don't think the contracts are legally binding yet, but she's working on making them binding. Well, clearly OP is also not business-minded. If she was, she would understand that what her daughter is doing is totally normal. Finding and arranging the jobs is also work. If OP's oldest wants all the money, 
She has to do all the work. And now let's hear the community's opinion. You're the a-hole. Your middle daughter created a lucrative business and then hired your older daughter as an employee. As an employee, your oldest daughter has to follow the employment contract that she signed. Your middle daughter was actually very intelligent to get all of this in writing, since family exchanges are not covered by verbal contracts and, most of the time, will need a written contract in court. If this went to court, your middle child would win because, legally, she did everything by the book. She also has every right to fire your older daughter if she refuses to pay what is legally your middle daughter's share. This does not concern you, and you should not have inserted yourself in this situation. You need to stay out of it and allow your middle daughter to run her business. If your older daughter wants to be a part of it, she knows what the contract states. Edited to update. For everyone saying minors cannot enter into contracts, if parents accept the terms of a contract, a contract with a minor is enforceable. Also, if a situation where both parties to the contract are minors and it is clear that neither party is taking unfair advantage of the other, it is possible that a court would apply principles of equity and take some action against the breaching signatory to the contract in order to prevent his or her unjust enrichment and or to enforce fundamental fairness. You're the a-hole. They had a contract. Now your oldest won't have any income at all. Why do you think it's okay for your oldest to not honor her word? You're the a-hole. The oldest signed a contract. She knew what the deal was. Your middle isn't taking her wages. She's doing all of the legwork and communication to get the jobs. Without your middle, your oldest wouldn't have gotten these jobs unless she did all this legwork herself. I, female 33, have one sibling, an older brother, Dan, male 36. Dan and I never had the closest relationship, even when we were kids. I can't exactly pinpoint why, but it was just the way it was. Our mom was a single mother, and our dad was in prison serving a long sentence, and only got out when I was 17 and Dan was 20. When we were kids, our mom was working two jobs as a housekeeper and as a school lunch lady to make ends meet. We were really broke. As soon as I turned 16, I got a job working in retail to contribute to the household and hopefully save up for university. I was starting to save up quite a sizable amount of money after a year. In that same time, Dan got one of his co-workers pregnant. Shortly after she gave birth, she was hospitalized multiple times with postpartum psychosis and eventually lost all custody of the baby. Dan took custody, and so it was me, our mom, Dan, and the baby in a two-bedroom flat. It was feeling a bit crowded and cluttered, and Dan vented to me many times about how he needs to get his own place. Dan was really struggling for money. He was working a minimum wage job and had all the baby expenses to worry about. When I was 17, Dan stole my debit card and bank details and withdrew all of my savings, which was around 2,000 pounds. He put my debit card back in my wallet and then left the house with the baby and moved in with his new girlfriend. I felt so betrayed that he would just take something that I worked so hard for. My mom told me I was forbidden from going to the police about it and told me to just let it go, as Dan is struggling and needed it. When I was old enough to go to university, my dad gave me money to go towards my expenses. I hadn't spoken to Dan since that day, and Dan never attempted to speak to me either. Last week, my mom tried sneakily to get me and Dan to meet up under the guise that we were just getting a normal dinner at a restaurant, and he was in on it. I told them that I don't want to see Dan. Dan told me I need to grow up, and I can't hold a grudge over this forever. It was such a long time ago, and he was young and desperate, and he's still my brother. He said it's only money, and I shouldn't be so materialistic. I told him it's the principle of it that I'm his little sister and he stole something significant from me. He said I'm dramatizing the situation and that he was in a rough patch and surely I could understand why he did it. No one in the family is on my side here except my dad and I'm wondering if I'm really being so wrong and so cold-hearted. I don't think OP is in the wrong here. If he came to OP and sincerely apologized, then I could maybe say it would be reasonable to forgive him and forget about the money. But it's his lack of remorse and respect for OP 15 years later. It seems like it's the real issue now and OP is entitled to take issue with it. He should own what he did and try to make amends, not lecture OP on why he thinks OP is being unreasonable. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Not the a-hole. If it's only money, then why doesn't he just pay it back? Not the a-hole. He said it's only money, then he'll have no problem to pay it back. Look, it's not just money. He broke your trust. He was an adult with a job, living at his mom's, in a home where everyone worked. Thus, I'm guessing the family wouldn't have let the baby go without. Yet, he decided to steal from his little sister, just so he could live with his new girlfriend. You aren't cold-hearted.
He wasn't at risk of ending up under a bridge with his baby, even if he wants to make it sound like it. He didn't have a conversation with you. He didn't set a plan to give it back little by little. No, he decided he had a right to your money and to gamble with your future. He didn't know if your parents would pay for your education, then told you to get over it. I'd tell him to pay you back your money, adjusted for inflation and interest, and then you will consider getting over it.